Hey everyone, Icarus here, and today I am going to be talking about something that has been frustrating a lot of the competitive community and a lot of pub players lately, and that is the Assault game mode, also known as 2 Capture Points or 2CP. I'm mostly going to be focusing on Temple of Anubis in this video, as it seems to be the biggest defender of the problems I'm going to be talking about, has played the most of all the 2CP maps in the competitive scene, and is also the 2CP map I personally have the most experience with, much to my dismay, but... What I'm going to be talking about applies to every single 2CP map. What I'm going to be talking about are these stall strategies that have emerged with the latest patch. They're these compositions that include May, Diva, Winston, and Tracer as a core that a team switches to as soon as they lose the first fight while defending the second point. The idea is to stall for ages with the mobility of Tracer, the tankiness and mobility combination of Diva and Winston, and the invulnerability and protection of Wall until May builds up an ultimate, which can then be used to force the entire enemy team to back off from the point, allowing the defending team to re-establish their defense, or just die to May and her respawning teammates. Alternatively, they just stall long enough to re-establish the defense anyway, by gradually getting pickoffs and utilizing the fact that the offense walkback is so much longer than the defense walkback, or building up ultimate charge and then wiping the attacking team with their ults. Even if they don't manage to regain control of the point or win the game off of it, this composition so often buys the defense an extra minute or two on the clock which can make a huge difference, especially on Assault where a good defense can be done really well and the bonus 30 seconds from a point will mostly be spent traveling. On top of this, delaying for such a long time can put the game into overtime. Once an attacking team gets into overtime, they cannot push again, even if they end up overcoming the defense and successfully taking the second point. This means that they have to full defend in the next round, and even then only to tie, otherwise they just instantly lose. It's also important to note that these strategies only work on 2CP because of the long capture times. In payload, when an enemy team runs store strategies, the payload will normally only be a few meters from the point anyway, which takes around a second to capture if the defense team steps off. But on 2CP, the stalling can start when there is still a good 5 or more seconds before the team takes the point. The point is the same distance away as the capture zone on a payload map, but the difference is that a defense team only needs to step up for a second to lose on payload when it's that close, but they can afford a second of not being on that point in 2CP. Now, these strategies aren't anything new to Overwatch, especially at a high level, but recently they have taken on a new form and become so much stronger than before. This is because of a few things. First, attackers now have one less minute after getting the first point to take the second one from 5 minutes to 4. This means these delay strategies can push that overtime so much easier, and every second counts more than before, making delaying even more effective. Secondly is the buff to May's ultimate that makes it cover the full point. These two factors alone lead to the situation where the defense has so many more tools to delay, because of it, delay strategies are actually much more viable and aren't just a mean to get an extra 30 seconds or so out. The best way to demonstrate just how viable and strong they are is of course to give an example of a professional game where these delay compositions happened. This is Reunited vs Misfits, the number 2 and number 5 ranked teams worldwide playing on Temple of Anubis. Reunited got the first point with 2 minutes and 37 seconds remaining, and so they had two, 6 minutes and 37 seconds to push. They failed their first push purely by getting outplayed and now have around 4 minutes and 39 seconds remaining. Right off the bat we see this McCree, he's flanking, soon he's going to look for a pickoff but he hesitates a little bit, gets a bit too greedy, and so he's actually going to get spotted and killed off pretty fast and he's immediately going to switch to Tracer once this happens. Now of course, as I'm sure a lot of you who watch the competitive scene know, a pickoff at the fight can mean huge things and as you see right here, since now a 6v5 with a couple of good ults from KYB and Valutaja, the post bomb, and the Dragon Blade, they're able to clean up, but soon is already back to the point with his Tracer. He's already delaying out, and now RYB is back on the point as well with Diva. He's delaying time, and now we have Nevix coming with Mei. He uses an Ice Wall to get on the point, and then freezes himself in the Ice Block, making himself invulnerable for 4 seconds, which buys time for all of the remaining players of Misfits to get back. And from here, it's just this endless cycle where soon comes back on the Tracer, delays for a few seconds, RYB comes back on the Diva, delays for a few seconds, and then Nevix comes back on the May and continues delaying. And this will go on for around about a minute and a half. And this is basically what I'm talking about here. Reunited had a near perfect initiation. They did everything they needed to win the fight. They got a pick off right at the start on a key hero who had an ult, so that wouldn't be available in the fight. Then they proceeded to just kill Everyone on the side of Reunited, they got a two-man post bomb and then KYB with his Dragon Blade. 
killed a bunch of more people, but it just really isn't mattering, as you can see. They got onto the point, they established themselves onto the point, around about like 4 minutes or so, and it's now 3 minutes. They still haven't taken it. They're close, but they haven't taken it yet. Again, they're just managing to get people into the black hole, they kill people off. We, the Reunited finally loses their first hero, they lose Winghaven on the Re Reinhardt, that is the only hero they will lose in this team fight. Meanwhile, everyone on the side of Misfits has been killed at least three times, and there you go, they lose only because Nevix got booped at a weird angle. Had he been booped at such an angle that he landed on the point while well, the Lushu and Zenyatta were coming back, they would probably have been able to get on the point and continue delaying, potentially even delaying another minute, because as you saw there, there was really no sign of stopping had that boop not happened. They probably would have just kept holding it. As you can see, this composition is extremely effective at its job. Reunited got onto the point with 4 minutes and 15 seconds on the clock, and finally captured it with 2 minutes and 47 seconds remaining on the clock. Despite losing all of their heroes almost instantly, Misfits was pretty easily able to stall out a 4 minute and a half without any impressive play or kills on their part, just purely by throwing bodies at the point. Only the Reinhardt died during the fight for Reunited, and they were killing all of Misfits heroes almost as soon as they got onto the point. Reunited actually got really lucky in that situation, because they killed 3 people right at the start, and then the other 3 a little bit later. Had they killed 4 or even got a perfect wipe, they would have ended up worse off as the entirety of Misfits respawns at once and is able to rush back to the fight to make it a 6v6 before Reunited has even got 2 ticks onto the point. And now Misfits would have heroes like Mei, Eva, and Tracer who are so much harder to deal with when they don't just have to flood in and then try and live, and can actually focus on getting kills since they have backup from their team. This isn't an isolated incident either, this is happening all the time in pubs and in the pro scene. This is basically THE meta for Temple of Anubis, both in pubs and in competitive. In fact, in the round after this, Reunited proceed to hold only for a full minute before losing the point because Misfits had started the fight by trickle killing Reunited, and this was after Reunited easily held the previous fight using a Mei ultimate they had already built up. But what's the problem with this though? Shouldn't people be using anything in their power to try and win the game? Some might say, while that is certainly true, the problem is that these strategies don't reward smart play. It doesn't take much skill to switch to a different hero and then rush back to the point and keep it contested for a really long time. But it takes a lot of skill to initiate a fight and get three immediate kills without losing anyone as we saw happened with Reunited. The problem is that these new strategies seem to be punishing good play. If a team gets a near perfect initiation killing most of the enemy heroes, then the stragglers, or even a perfect one where they wipe all 6 heroes, the chances of winning on that first push are still pretty low since the enemy team can just stall for so long and slowly whittle them down by gradually getting kills or building up a May ultimate to eventually be able to clear the attacking team due to the distance between offense and defense spawn and the point. If a team gets a pick off at the start of the fight because an enemy is out of position and initiates off of that, something that really should be punished a lot, the chance of them even getting that first tick drops even lower since that hero will be back as someone like Mei or Tracer to hold the point for the rest of their team to respawn. The problem gets even worse when you consider what happened in that Reunited vs Misfits game. Reunited was picking off the heroes that came to the point almost instantly and only lost Reinhardt during the entire 1.5 minute fight, but it still took them 1.5 minutes to actually capture it. They suddenly weren't getting outplayed at all, it's not as if they were losing multiple heroes and that was why they were getting stored so long. They were killing these heroes as quickly as they possibly could, but between Maze and Vulnerability, Trace's mobility and Diva's two lives, it just wasn't quickly enough and let the other heroes get back to the point. As if this wasn't enough, the price for offense to initiate is so much higher than for the defense to defend. Even at a pro level, pushing the second point of Anubis is really hard. Having talked with several pros myself, they basically say that if you use ults on your first push and fail to take the point then, you have lost all subsequent pushes. It's easy to see why. If we just take a look at Temple of Anubis, we see the three ways to get in. All of them are choke points, and all of them are telegraphed to the defense team that they are being pushed. Meanwhile, the defense team can spread out, have heroes hiding, they have so much space to move around. All they really need to do is look for pickoffs and play reactively if the offense team gets to the point, or the offense team has to actually first get to the point in the first place, or dealing with the fact that they're pushing through a very obvious choke point for a long time, where they can be focused down as they do, and then the actual fight once they get to the point. To actually push well into this situation, a team needs to be playing well and coordinated, and most importantly they need to use ultimates to initiate or they may just get bursted down. 
Most likely, they will need to use Lucio or Zenyatta ultimate to get onto the point without losing anyone in the first place, and then an Earth Shatter or Graviton to actually deal with the enemy team as they spread out and use the Zenyatta and Lucio ultimates of their own. If they fail this push, then they're already screwed as it becomes an even fight assuming no ultimates left on either side that is made uneven because the defense has this huge positional advantage. Then, if things go well, they might just be screwed anyway, because the defense comes back to stall with their own ultimates, and even if they don't have any, basically come back to what is an even fight. This also creates the situation where the offense team basically has to win the game in one push, because otherwise they lose all of their ultimates and have to waste two minutes building them back up. This makes these stall strategies even stronger, because if the defense team stalls for a minute or two, then manages to take, to take back the point, the offense team now has no ultimates and now has way less time on the clock to actually build them back up. All of these factors lead to this really unfair situation where an offense team isn't rewarded at all for a good initiation or a good subsequent team fight, because the defense team can just spam bodies onto the point while the offense has to maintain their good play, because if they don't kill off the defense team as soon as they get onto the point, or they lose even a single one of their heroes, the chance of them losing the fight before taking the point is so much higher. If the offense has wiped the defending team and is consistently cleaning up the offense's heroes as they get onto the point, they shouldn't still be at a risk of losing the fight and the point, because they are clearly playing better than the defense is, and the defense doesn't even have to play well at all to even cause this situation. To tie the true unfairness of all of this together is the fact that there's no real counterplay to this. A perfect initiation is actually bad, because everyone on the defense respawns and comes back to the fight before two ticks are even gotten on the point, and super quickly too if they utilize tools like Lucio Boost. Getting a pick off is bad, because that person will be back before a single tick is even gotten, which goes against everything about playing Overwatch, where you should be punishing the enemy team if they let one of their heroes get caught out and die before the fight even starts. The best way to actually take the point without having to worry about this situation seems to be to kill off one half of the other team and then the other half, or stagger all of their deaths so that they're really easy to deal with. But that's not something you can really control, and if you are getting kills on the enemy one by one and staggering them out, then you probably initiated badly or are playing badly anyway. Either way, you can't just choose to kill the enemy team one by one or spread them out. You have to take the kills you can get, or you risk just losing the fight anyways. And on top of all of this, there's the fact that even if you do kill them one by one, even if you do sag them out, all that does is just make it easier to pick them off if they come to the point, they'll still be able to delay for a good amount of time. There's also no risk to the enemy team running this, they only stand to gain from using this strategy. Even if they don't pull it off successfully, it's not like they lost anything out of attempting to stall, because they were going to lose the game anyway. It's just this really annoying, hard to beat strategy, no counterplay that requires no skill, but punishes good play skill and good initiations from the attacking team, it's not fun to watch because it's basically just a bunch of heroes running to the point and dying, and it really just shouldn't be the way things are, there shouldn't be strategies that are incredibly easy to run, but can have huge, huge boons for the team that runs them, and just completely shut down the skill that it took for the attacking team to get in the, to the point in the first place. I hope you guys liked this video and found it informative, I just wanted to show off this really annoying strategy that has risen as of late, and talk a little bit about the problems of it and how ridiculous it is right now. If you enjoyed or found this video interesting, leave a like, if you have any questions or want to add to the discussion, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you want to keep track of what I'm doing, be sure to follow me on Twitter at IcarusGamers, and if you want to see my next video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. With all of that, I've been Icarus, and I'll see you in the next one.